Have you ever looked out the window of an airplane and thought, we must be flying at least 1,000 kilometers an hour. Why does it feel so slow? You're watching clouds drift by, land crawling beneath you, and that tiny moving map says you're going 900 kilometers an hour. But here's the twist. Airplanes actually fly slower than they used to. And it's not a mistake. It's a choice. One that defines modern aviation, balancing speed, fuel, and the delicate art of efficiency. Today, we're diving into why airplanes fly slower than you think, and how that small detail shapes everything about how the modern world moves. So buckle up, this story goes from the Concorde's supersonic glory days to the invisible winds 11 kilometers above Earth. When you're cruising high above the clouds, time stretches. You're watching movies, eating dinner, maybe even falling asleep, but the world outside is moving at the speed of a bullet. At 900 kilometers per hour, a Boeing 777 covers the length of Manhattan in about 7 seconds. But strangely, that's not fast for aviation. Because if you looked at a flight timetable from the 1970s, something would stand out. A typical New York to London flight took about 6 hours back then. Today? Around 7. So what happened? Why have we slowed down? There was a time when the sky belonged to speed. When flying wasn't just about getting somewhere, it was about defying limits. At the heart of that era stood an icon, the Concorde. This sleek, needle-nosed jet wasn't just an airplane, it was a statement. It flew at Mach 2, twice the speed of sound, slicing through the upper atmosphere at over 60,000 feet. From Paris to New York in barely three hours, a journey so fast that you could leave Europe after lunch and land in America in time for lunch again. Passengers looked out the window and saw the curve of the Earth, the deep indigo of the stratosphere the faint shimmer of space just beyond. Inside, it was all champagne, silver cutlery, and the quiet hum of pure technological triumph. The Concorde symbolized the height of human progress, proof that we'd conquered the sky not just through flight, but through speed. It was aviation's rock star. But behind that glory, a quieter truth was taking shape. The Concorde's engines burned fuel faster than any other jet, nearly 5,000 gallons per hour. It was beautiful, but brutally expensive to operate. And when oil prices skyrocketed in the 1970s, the dream of affordable supersonic travel began to collapse under its own weight. Then came the environmental backlash, the deafening sonic booms, the pollution concerns, the limited overland routes. Governments started grounding ambitions. Airlines looked at their balance sheets and realized passengers didn't care about shaving off two hours if it meant doubling the price of a ticket. They didn't pay for minutes. They paid for comfort, reliability, and price. So, while the Concorde chased the sound barrier, another airplane, slower, heavier, but far more practical, quietly reshaped the skies. The Boeing 747, the queen of the skies, traded speed for scale. It could carry over 400 people across oceans at a fraction of the cost. And in doing so, it made long-distance air travel something new, not a luxury for the few, but a routine for the many. That was the turning point. The age of speed gave way to the age of efficiency. Airlines learned that every extra knot of speed came with a cost, more drag, more fuel, more money lost. The pursuit of faster was replaced by the science of smarter. From then on, success in aviation wasn't measured by mock numbers or record-breaking flights. It was measured in dollars saved per seat, per kilometer a quiet revolution that forever changed how and why we fly. Airplanes don't cruise at their maximum speed, they cruise at their sweet spot. A perfect balance between speed and efficiency, known as the long-range cruise speed. It's the point where flying faster burns too much fuel and flying slower wastes too much time. It's a narrow window, and it's one of the quietest, most precise calculations in aviation. Here's how it works. As an airplane accelerates through the sky, it starts pushing against billions of air molecules every second. At low speeds, those molecules slip around the fuselage smoothly. But as you push faster, especially near the speed of sound, something strange happens. The air ahead of the aircraft doesn't have time to move out of the way. It compresses, stacking up like invisible pressure waves. This is where drag, the invisible resistance that fights motion, starts to rise dramatically. And drag doesn't increase gently. It climbs exponentially. Each additional fraction of speed demands a disproportionate amount of energy. 
In aviation terms, it's like hitting an invisible wall, a boundary known as transonic drag rise, typically between Mach 0.8 and 0.85. Beyond that, the air begins forming tiny shock waves over the wings and tail, disrupting lift and guzzling fuel at astonishing rates. So instead of racing toward their top speed, pilots set the throttle for efficiency, not adrenaline. They let the airplane cruise right below that costly threshold, fast enough to cover thousands of kilometers efficiently, but slow enough to avoid burning unnecessary fuel. It's a fine dance of physics and economics, programmed directly into the aircraft's computers. You could think of it like driving on the highway. Your car might hit 200 kilometers an hour, but why would you? At that speed, your engine roars, your fuel gauge plummets, and the journey costs far more than it saves. The same rule applies 11 kilometers above the ground. Except here, every extra knot of speed can cost thousands of dollars in fuel. Modern jets are masterpieces of restraint, built for just fast enough. They skim through the upper atmosphere not at full throttle, but at a carefully calculated balance point, where efficiency and speed coexist in harmony. That's the quiet secret of modern aviation. The art isn't in flying as fast as possible, it's in knowing exactly when to stop. Fuel isn't just an expense in aviation, it's the heartbeat of the business. Every drop matters. Every knot counts. At today's prices, fuel alone can account for 30 to 40% of an airline's total operating costs. That means a single long-haul flight can burn through tens of thousands of dollars in just one trip. So imagine this. If a fleet of aircraft flies just 10 knots slower, they save millions in fuel each year. 10 knots, barely noticeable to passengers, but enormous in impact. And that's exactly what airlines around the world have quietly started doing. Since the early 2000s, a subtle transformation has been unfolding above our heads. Cruise speeds have gently decreased, not dramatically, just by a few percent, but across thousands of flights every single day, those fractions add up to billions in global savings. It's the invisible efficiency revolution, playing out silently at 35,000 feet. Airlines even have a name for this delicate balancing act, the cost index. It's the brain of modern flight planning, a simple number that tells the airplane's computer how to trade time for money. Set a high cost index, and the jet flies faster, burning more fuel but saving precious minutes for tight connections or scheduling needs. Set a low cost index, and the aircraft eases back, saving fuel, reducing emissions, and arriving just a bit later. The difference is subtle, a few minutes here, a few kilograms of fuel there, but multiply that by an entire fleet every day of the year and the savings are staggering. And it's not just about economics, it's about strategy. By flying slightly slower, airlines reduce engine wear, lower maintenance costs, and extend aircraft lifespan. It's sustainability and profitability rolled into one smooth cruise setting. Most passengers never notice. Their flight feels as smooth and punctual as ever. But behind the scenes, the airline has optimized every second of that journey, shaving costs, fuel, and emissions with quiet precision. It's aviation's silent compromise, an invisible trade-off between time and efficiency that plays out on every single flight you take. You've probably flown through it dozens of times and never even realized. Here's the secret twist. Sometimes, the sky decides your speed for you. High above us flows the jet stream. Fast ribbons of air moving west to east, up to 200 miles per hour. When planes fly with the jet stream, they get a massive tailwind boost. They ride the air. A flight from New York to London might take six hours, but the return trip against the jet stream can take eight. Same distance, same aircraft, just different wind. So even if your plane's airspeed hasn't changed, the ground speed, how fast you move relative to Earth, can vary wildly. Sometimes, flying slower is actually flying smarter. Modern airliners like the Boeing 787 or Airbus A350 could go faster. Their engines are powerful enough. Their aerodynamics, refined. But the problem is, the world they fly in isn't built for it. Air traffic control systems, airspace routes, and schedules are all synchronized to today's speeds. Going faster would mean arriving when the gate isn't free or reaching airspace that isn't ready. Airplanes aren't sprinting machines. They're part of a global ballet, choreographed down to the minute. And besides, if airlines could shave 15 minutes off a flight, 
but burn 5% more fuel doing it, would anyone notice? You'd land slightly earlier. The airline would lose thousands. That's an easy choice. The truth is, slower skies aren't a failure of progress. They're a reflection of wisdom. Aviation has grown beyond the adrenaline of speed into the quiet art of precision and balance. Every flight you take, every calm, steady cruise high above the oceans, is a perfect equation of physics and patience. Fuel, wind, altitude, cost, and time all weave together, forming a rhythm that keeps modern aviation in motion. Every decision, from throttle setting to flight path, is carefully tuned to achieve not as fast as possible, but as efficient as necessary. Flying slower doesn't mean falling behind. It means flying smarter, cleaner, and safer. It means understanding that saving a few minutes isn't worth wasting tons of fuel or wearing out engines faster. Today's aircraft, sleek, quiet, and remarkably efficient, have mastered that balance. The Concorde once proved we could conquer speed. But modern jets like the A350 and 787 Dreamliner prove something far more meaningful. That progress isn't always about acceleration. Sometimes, it's about refinement. These machines are designed to cooperate with the sky, not fight against it. Their wings flex with the wind, their computers read the atmosphere in real time, and their engines whisper instead of roar. They're not racing, they're gliding with purpose. So next time you look at that little map on your screen, watching your plane inch across the world, remember, it's not moving slowly. It's moving intelligently. You're flying exactly as fast as you should be. The perfect harmony between physics, economics, and the quiet logic of the sky. Because in aviation, as in life, true progress isn't about how quickly you move, but how beautifully you find balance along the way. Because sometimes, true progress isn't about going faster. It's about knowing when to slow down.